Okay, so this one's quite interesting. Obviously, with the release of the upcoming uh, revision for the PlayStation 5, we've got a really intriguing possibility here, which is to say that you can buy a digital edition PlayStation 5, and then you can upgrade. You can actually slap on an optical drive, and it's happy days. You've now got uh, access to the whole, you know, basically the pantheon of PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 titles in physical form. This is a good thing. However, it turns out that um, once you've actually bought your optical drive upgrade and you've uh, attached it to the unit, there's some sort of online connection required to pair the um the two units together question is why um i'm actually going to get the supporter points and questions out of mm-hmm. the way first before we tackle this uh this one from johnny underscore 5a somehow knew it wouldn't be that easy with the blu-ray drive on new ps5 should we be worried for long-term repairability of these looks like it could potentially be another avenue of planned obsolescence authentication servers don't last forever hope you're feeling better rich yeah, I am. Thank you. Uh, this one from Ishrak Suban. Not a question so much as a potentially unpopular take. The requirement to have an online connection to activate the detachable Blu-ray drive is a necessary compromise to ensure modders won't be able to bypass any anti-piracy measures that were easily defeated in previous generations. Ah. Uh, I think Xbox 360 was pretty much the the only optical drive hack that i'm aware of in recent yeah, or semi-recent but times but it is a it is a reasonable point it is a, a vector for potential access to the system and for, for circumventing <sighs> copy protection i am going to go to you on this one john because uh, obviously you were incensed and not happy when you heard of the news <laughs> but you know is there oh. is there an ex, a reason slash excuse as to why it needs this online verification? Well, the thing that quickly came to light after this was brought up is that it may be due to a uh, DMCA, uh, basically a, a section that they passed that basically says to circumvent a technological measure that effectively controls access to a copyrighted work is illegal. And I think that right. there may be an issue with uh, basically U S law allowing people to tamper with drives that can accept copyrighted work like this, uh, which kind of goes against the whole right to repair thing that we're seeing elsewhere. But it, it seems like basically American law may be the reason for this, <laughs> which sucks, ah. frankly. And I, if that is indeed the case, then sadly, I don't think that there's much they could do about that. The other theory, and I think this is actually less likely, but maybe the case is that uh, Blu-ray movies and such have like a license cost associated with it, and maybe they only have to pay that cost when you activate the drive. Like it, it could be either of those things or both of those things, but it does seem like there are things in place that would cause this to have to be the case, which I hadn't considered when it was announced, and that is obviously a gigantic bummer especially when it sounds like this the same warning is printed on the box for the model which includes the disk drive which makes me wonder if you actually have to activate it basically if now the ability to activate your ps5 offline is now gone that's what i'm no, we haven't tested that yet right we, we don't have one yet we don't we don't have no. a slim the original no. uh this is a great feature is that you can actually pull it out of the box, set it up and go. You don't have to connect it to the internet at all. It will just work, which is great for the future uh, down the line kind of thing. And as before, if the, if a game requires a certain level of firmware, that game disc will have the firmware on the disc, it seems. Yeah. So, which is Sony's been doing that since PSP. Wow. So yeah. technically the PS five was still an offline machine, much like the switch. Uh, but not like the Xbox. And now it seems like the PlayStation 5 is going to become more like the Xbox and in a very bad way. Uh, so mm. that is unfortunate that it seems like this new model is going to require online connectivity. And of course, there's going to be people saying, oh, but everybody has internet. And it's really not about that. It's yes, it's true, but it's about long-term preservation, which frankly, I don't feel very good about it for these systems, given the potential lifespan issues of the SSD, the whole connectivity online stuff. It does kind of feel like these are systems that will not last. Like, unlike everything point. behind me here, which I could pull out from like 30 or 40 years ago, and as all you know, you replace a few capacitors here and there, they still run just fine. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case after this point. I feel like mm-hmm. this 
ability to repair and maintain a console long term will probably end in the post PS3 360 era. Those will probably be the last machines that are really easy to keep running. Uh, I guess technically the Switch, aside from the battery issue, I think the Switch should be pretty good long term. Um, and you know, battery stuff that's that plagues every handheld portable thing, right? And there's there are ways around that, and batteries continue to be made and probably will. And maybe there'll be a circumvention for getting around the requirement to have a battery as well. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I guess my hope here is that whatever Nintendo announces next continues to use carts and does not run into this problem and will remain an offline poss- potential an offline usable machine from the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. I think there's a good chance of that, John. And I also think, you know, these recent rumors of digital and physical switches are probably off beam simply because, you know, the cost of a cartridge port is nowhere near as high as the cost of a um, of an optical drive. Right. It's just a question of the extent to which they want control over the ecosystem more than the actual cost of building a system. Um, and, you know, typically Nintendo have been pretty good about that kind of thing. Um, I am sort of slightly concerned about this uh, online connection required to pair the optical drive for the new PlayStation 5. On the flip side, there does seem to be a growing movement to actually champion right to repair. Yes, mm-hmm. um, that is good. Which means, yeah, which means that at some point, I mean, maybe not now, maybe in the future, that, you know, it might even be legislated and right. you know there might need to be some kind of fallback to actually make this possible without a connection or at least a strong commitment to actually in, you know keep those servers going whatever happens which right. i don't have a lot of faith in i'll be honest with you um i don't have a lot you know i don't mind it you know i think it's going to be fine in the next what 10 possibly even 20 years but i'm just reminded you know the last time we were talked about this on df direct the guy who got his zx spectrum tape out of the attic yeah, and you know he bought it, he owned it, and decades later he's playing it, and you know that's that's something which is quite valuable, which is in danger. But you know what can I say? Um, I am curious also as to once whether you know once a drive that is actually paired with the new PlayStation Five, whether it's a you know you can't unpair it and use it on another uh, machine. I suspect probably, probably not. Probably that'd be interesting. Unless you activate it on the new machine and then it's no longer activated on the old machine. That might that mm, might possibly be the way it works. Huh. Maybe that's something we should be testing. Which uh, means I need to buy two PlayStation. Oh my games. god! <laughs> we we should def we should test that though. I I think that's something that's important to know. 